you know, before we're getting started, I, what, what are your favorite brands? Let's hear some brand shout outs. Whoa. Okay. All right. I heard a lot. I heard a lot, but I did hear a lot of AEW. There's no doubt about that. I heard some Squishmallow fans out there. I see one. I see. What do you? What? All right, what that, I know that's not. What do you got? What? I want to see. Let's see. Let's hold it up. I want to see what that is. Oh my God, that is too cute. That is really cute. Well, the the thing is, and what makes this so wonderful is just seeing the multi generational um, world that we live in when it comes to collecting and collectors. Um, it used to be a long time ago that adults would feel a little uncomfortable about collecting. And there were movies about it. Remember the 40-year-old virgin? Remember that movie? <laughs> so when when I got started in toys, that was the that was like the, the overall thought process. So the cool thing about Comic-Con is it used to be sort of like on the extreme, and now it's mainstream. So that is awesome and cool. <laughs> One minute until we officially start. We have a chair. We have a person. That was very kind of you guys. Very nice of you. I don't know if anybody here is like me. Like, if, if I could make myself really tiny, that's what I would do in a, in a crowd. I would just sort of like, like that. Tinier? Tinier. <laughs> Thank you. Did you not see the triceps? <laughs> we can start! Yeah! <laughs> All right, forget everything that's been said already. That was fodder. This is real. Welcome to the 2023 Jazzwares first annual Comic Con panel. Yeah. All right, so Jazzwares, as a lot of you guys know, is the fourth largest toy company now, which is mind boggling. And we are, as of October, a Berkshire Hathaway company, which means we joined the Warren Buffett universe, which has been fascinating, incredible, and wonderful. And I will say, from a toy company perspective, there is no better place to land. It is like the greatest destination you could ever have. So, on behalf of Judd Zabersky, who is our CEO, Laura Zabersky, who is our president, and myself, Jeremy Padauer, I'm the chief brand officer here at Jazzwares, we just want to thank you on behalf of the almost 1,500 folks that work hard, passionately, every single day at Jazzwares, including this panel. We just want to thank you. And on behalf of a lot of the folks that you see around that are taking video and making sure that this looks really great and polished, we just want to thank you. So we have four big announcements today. We have four big brands to talk about today, and we have some surprises. The surprises are going to be kind of cool. Before we get started, I just want to say to you guys, on behalf of all of us, we are a toy company that loves toys. We do not claim to be an entertainment company. We don't claim to be a play company. We don't claim to be anything but what we are, which is we are, and we want to be, the world's greatest toy company. All right, shall we? That's enough of a preamble. Are we pumped? We shall. We shall. We're pumped. All right, well, let's get started. We're going to start with four announcements, a little housekeeping for all of us, for some of you guys that may or may not be aware of some of the stuff that's happening at Jazz Wars. So, Kanzen Anime. Okay, Kanzen Anime is our comprehensive portfolio of the best anime across all figure formats and under an umbrella brand that we're going to be calling Kanzen. Okay, and Kanzen Anime is going to launch with Crunchyroll. You can see some awesome brands on here like Attack on Titan, Chainsaw Man, Ju Jutsu Kaizen, My Hero Academia, and Spy Family. Uh, we're going to be launching 18 plus properties across five master category licenses and uh, Greg's up there sweating a little bit. Raise your hand, Greg. He's going to be uh, working on that with uh, Sela and a great team. Ray, 
you guys are going to crush it. So let's give them a little bit of a... <laughs> next year, next year we'll have a lot to talk about uh, when it comes to this. Uh, this year we're just dropping some knowledge that this is something to look forward to. Next. Hello Kitty and friends. Okay. So, Jazz Wears Hello Kitty and Friends toy line is going to embrace Sanrio's signature Kawhi style and the playful, colorful nature in a wide variety of toy products across multiple categories. If you are a fan or part of the Sanrio fandom or you know someone, we are going to service this brand like no one's ever done before and uh, with collectors in mind. Um, and with kids in mind, and we just want to put a lot of value into your purchase and do some really fun stuff, and they're totally up for it. Okay, Dev Series. What is Dev Series? So Dev Series is our line of Roblox properties. So we've been the master toy partner of Roblox for quite some time, and what we're doing now is we're focusing on brands first under the Roblox world. So brands like Brookhaven and Arsenal and Build-A-Boat, Hide and Seek, uh, Royal High, um, we've got Adopt Me, some really big brands. Now, the truth of the matter is, these brands, and, and if you look at the Roblox profile and portfolio, it is shockingly large. When we do this event 20 years from now, and I will not be speaking, I'll be somewhere in this room, uh, or a different room, um, you'll, you'll, you'll notice a huge fandom amongst the next generation of kids and, and young adults that are really embracing and loving all of the Roblox properties. And Vault. So Vault is our very own direct consumer proposition. And Vault is going to be very cool. And I'm going to talk about it a little bit more when we go into AEW and give you a little bit more insight as to what we're doing. But if you see here, there's a QR code, okay? Not to be confused with QSR. QSR means like, like Happy Meals, but... <laughs> QR code, and if you put your phone up there, if it doesn't work, you can come to our booth and, and find it. But sign up for that so you can be fully aware of all the great Jazzwares direct consumer items that are coming out. Okay, where do we begin? <laughs> Pokemon! Oh man, what a brand, what a brand. All right, so. Starting with Pokemon, and I'm not wearing my reading glasses, but that's okay, because I can see it almost. Um, we have uh, Jamie and Casey here. If you could just uh, introduce who you are. I am Jamie Sikorsky. I'm the Vice President of Pokemon at Jazzwares. Um, I lead all brand and design in partnership with the Pokemon Company International, some of whom have joined us today. Thank you very much. Um, we are very hard to bring you our amazing Pokemon show. Hello everybody, my name is Casey Wood. Uh, I just want to say real quick, thank you so much for coming out and being here. I'm so excited to be here talking about one of my favorite things, which is Pokemon. I'm the brand manager for Pokemon here at Jazzwares. <laughs> okay, so, Jamie and Casey, and if you guys feel like we're going quickly, it's because we have so much to show you today. But Jamie and Casey, is there anything that you can tease uh, for the Pokemon toy line uh, road ahead? Yeah, so as far as the road ahead for our toy line, I would say something that we, myself, and the whole team really at Jazzwares is just so excited about is the brand new show that's coming out. It's called Pokemon Horizons, the series. <laughs> and with that comes all the super incredible newly discovered Pokemon from the Palbea region, which we are just really excited to get uh, on shelves and figures and plush, whatever it may be, for all these amazing fans. Awesome, awesome, Chris. All right, well, of course we want to see some cool stuff. So speaking of the upcoming products from Pokemon, um, what are some of the new reveals that we can show the folks here at San Diego Comic-Con today? Yeah, well, first off, i got to say, absolutely thrilled to announce our 2023 San Diego Comic-Con exclusive item. This is the first partner set with Pikachu. This comes with every first partner Pokemon from every region, along with the Pikachu. This is the first time that Jazzwares has been able to sell a con exclusive for Pokemon here at our booth. So we have one on display. Come by and check it out. Uh, it's in our select packaging, really sleek. It's a one-of-a-kind collector item. So I would say, if you haven't seen it, come check it out, and hopefully you can grab one as well. What else you got? 
All right. Another thing we have at the booth is our six-inch articulated figures coming out in fall at Target. We're going to have Suicune and Mewtwo. Uh, just a great addition to our select line. So again, check them out at our booth and then look for them later this year on shelves. All right. A little first look. So, our deluxe Charizard figure. We do one of these collector statues every year. Last year we did Lucario. This year, Charizard. Um, one of my favorite collector pieces we have in the line. So, high level detail, high level deco, really cool lighting features. Definitely look out for this coming out this year in the fall as well. Now, mainline stuff. We have uh, some really cool Pokemon from a lot of different regions coming out. You'll be able to find these in our Clip and Go packs, in the Battle Figure 2 packs, as well as the multi packs. So, we're going to have two that I'm particularly excited about the iconic fossil Pokemon. We've got Ammonite, we've got Kabuto, but we're also going to have fan favorites from Johto, from Unova, from all over. So, look for these uh, throughout the line coming out this year. Woo! All right, like I said, Paldean Partners. We're really excited about the first partners from Paldea. Uh, we'll have these in our first partner packs. They're actually already hitting shelves. But be on the lookout, we're going to have these throughout the line. Uh, awesome new first partners uh, from the newest region. So cute. All right, so what I love about our three-inch figures this year, three of these, so Monferno, Frogadier, and Raboot, are all completing evolution lines. That's more complete evolution lines in our tooling library. But we also have some long-time, super requested fan favorites, Alola Marowak, and then two of my personal favorites, Porygon and Slowpoke. All right, our battle feature figures, these are four and a half inches. Each one comes with a unique battle feature. This year coming out, we got Alakazam and Infernape. So look out for those in fall. All right, speaking of evolution lines, we have these actually uh, in the front you can probably see, but uh, we've had our Matang figure. It's a three-inch figure since like 2019 in the line. Uh, this year, though, we're going to have our two-inch Beldum coming out. And then, to complete the evolution line, our epic battle figure, Metagross, an absolutely awesome evolution line, in scale, ready to go on, sh on store shelves this year. So be on the lookout for all these guys. <laughs> all right, one last, one last little uh, sneak. So, like I said, Suicune has uh, been revealed on, uh, at our booth right now. Come check it out. But I want to let everyone know, you can expect more legendary Pokemon from Johto in the 6-inch articulated figures coming next year. So look out for those in 2024. And that's going to do it for Pokemon. But again, thank you guys for coming out. Uh, come out of the booth. Come out, check it out. Come on. We'll be there. Yeah, come on. That's great. I mean, honestly, that is so exciting. I, Pokemon is, uh, I'm going to say up here. It's the greatest entertainment brand of all time. We, we, we know it's true. Now, now there's a lot, there's a lot of massive entertainment brands out there, but that's just the retail statistics. But next, this is a brand that was born within the world of Jazzwares, and it is Squishmallows. <laughs> all right, now, before before we get started, what I want to know is just a raising of the hands. Actually, don't raise hands. I want to hear you yell out whether you actually have a Squishmallow in your home. Yes. 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 Wow, that is, that is wild. And you know what we found out? We found out a few years ago because Squishmallow is, is this amazing plush property that we've all fallen in love with, right? But what we found out a few years ago is we did a study and we are trying to figure out Who's buying Squishmallows? Because one of the things that you do when you uh, are part of a toy company, you need to know who your consumers are, who's, who's part of your community. And it was amazing to find out how many adults are in the world of Squishmallows. And so what we realized was that this is a brand that is truly multi-generational. And that's awesome, because that means that we can share experiences with our kids. And so what we hope for you is that whether your kids or whether it's a a niece or a nephew that, you know, you have great shared experiences through the world of toys. And if Squishmallows is part of that, that would be awesome for us because that is part of our mission. So, who wants to see some stuff? <laughs> All right, time to see some stuff. And what I'm going to do now is introduce you to Betsy at Squishmallows. So, Betsy, who are you? VP of Marketing here at Jazzwares. 
And I'm so excited I get to talk to you about one of the hottest toy properties on the planet, Squishmallow. <laughs> probably seven times, but this is my first panel, so thank you for coming here today. So, awesome. all right. All right, Betsy, I have a couple questions for you, just, okay. just uh, so we can all be on the same page here. So, how many um, how many different Squishmallows um, have there been? Ooh, any guesses? Any guesses? Well, we have 300 at home, so. You have 300 at home? Yeah. <laughs> That's impressive. All right. Wait, raise your hand. Who's the 300 at home? <laughs> wow. That's okay. incredible. Come see us afterwards. There have been <laughs> over 2,000 unique Squishmallows created since this brand launched in 2017. Yeah, that's wild. And when it launched, it launched in a series of about 50 stores as a test with no marketing, no awareness, and it just blew out. And it was such a shock. It's only a shock because you sell, you do a lot of things in toys, as you can imagine, it's not like creating the next you know, $300 million movie. You get to take some shots. And when you see something that works this well, it just kind of blows your mind. So from the very first moment. But, Betsy, um, I will just ask you this. What are the most popular styles of Squish models? All right, well, I will say the Squish Squad definitely will have their own opinions on that <laughs> question. But from my point of view, I would say bats and cats. Cows, mushrooms, frogs, clowns, and definitely Bigfoots. <laughs> I mean, this is what yeah, we do for a living, by the way. <laughs> Axolotls, too. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, I want to know. I want to know some of your bit, your favorite squishmallows. Why don't you guys tell me? Let's hear some. Spin. Connor. Awesome. Yes. Who else? Pikachu. So you know what? Said Cam? Oh, Gerhard's gonna love you. <laughs> Wendy? Uh, I will say this to you guys. The thing that's cool is hearing and asking that question, and we just heard about 35 different squish mouths. So that's awesome. That's exactly what we want this brand to be about, and for everyone to identify with certain squish mallows and different opportunities and, and really have a beautiful collection there. Yes! Oh, we like that one. There you go. Which one? Squishville. Yes. Oh my gosh. Dude, wait, you might have to come and join us up here. <laughs> um, so how do people collect Squishmallows? Oh my goodness. Well, we love watching all of our fans around the world express their love for this brand on social channels. We are constantly on TikTok, or Squish Talk, as we like to call it. And the way in which they collect is everything from the colors and the styles to the sizes to the names and bios. There truly is a Squishmallows for everyone, Jeremy. Well, I, I agree with you. <laughs> and let me ask you a trivia question. Um, um, how many views have been on TikTok for Squishmallows? Any guesses? Sarah? Any guesses? Over 13 billion views on Squish Talk. Squish Talk. So, so to put this in perspective, there are 8 billion people on planet Earth. So for every human on planet Earth, there's been 1.6 views. I think that's roughly, maybe 1.625. Uh, Squish Talk. That's wild. That is a wild stat. It's exciting. We feel very grateful for our Squish Squad. So let's... Let's show everybody some cool Squishmallow stuff that uh, maybe they've never seen before. Yes. You guys want to see some awesome Squishmallow stuff? Yeah? yeah? All right. You know what? You're so enthusiastic. I don't even have to ask twice because the first time you've got so much enthusiasm. It's amazing. Thank you guys for that. Yes. Betsy, what do you got for everybody today? How many people here have been to the Jazzler's booth? 3513. Let me see. All right. You guys must check out the Squishmallows display where you will see our SDCC exclusive checking series, guys. We have Malcolm, I heard you, you love Malcolm. Malcolm the mushroom in his flipper coat. We've got Emily the bat in her little hoodie. We've got Cam the cat, where's my Cam people at? Um, dropping <laughs> his squish tea and favorite of Senna's. And last but certainly not least, who knows who this is? That's right. It's Patty the cow, and she's rocking her little bucket hat. So right now, 
You can get these at the Jazzwares booth 3513. These are so exclusive to San Diego Comic Con. And they're so fashionable. That's not all we're doing to celebrate SDCC. How many of y'all play Roblox? All right. Roblox play? Yeah, what see. about Squishmallows on Roblox? All right, we've got three million people every month who are playing Squishmallows on Roblox. So for a limited time during the con, you can go in and play the claw machine for a chance to add these to your virtual collection in the metaverse. That's cool. Nice. So we are so excited, guys. We are partnering with our um, the amazing people at Warner Brothers, and 24 hours ago, we launched these Harry Potter Squishmallows that are available right now. Hold out your phone on Amazon for free order. So. Yes. 
Maris, Animal Crossing, Mario. All right. Blue? Listen, I will say this. Those are some really, really good ideas. And don't be surprised that when you come to the second annual panel next year, that we show you some great stuff. Okay. Yes, you're right. A hundred percent. All right. Are you ready to talk about Star Wars? Yeah. Okay. Well, at the end of the at the dais or the dais at the end of the long table we have here, two very handsome gentlemen, Max and David. Why don't you guys uh, introduce yourselves? Hi. I'm Max Fox, uh, Senior Brand Manager for Star Wars and Micro Galaxy Squadron, and you are? I am David Clark, Marketing Manager at Godwards. So what is this thing, this Star Wars Micro Galaxy Squadron? Before we go into the questions, tell, just tell everybody what that is real quick. Well, first off, uh, how many Micro Galaxians we got in the house? Woo! All right, we're going to get smattering. All right, so... We are a scaled, authentic, and incredibly playable line of micro Star Wars vehicles from across the entire franchise. Um, each vehicle includes a one-inch scale uh, micro vehicle, micro figure accessory, uh, and we've been going strong for about four series right now. Very excited to show you uh, what we have in store for the rest of the year coming up. Amazing, amazing. Okay, what has been your favorite release so release so far, guys? I mean, David, you want to take this one first? Yeah, no, my favorite is the Millennium Falcon. That's the all-time favorite for me. The details are great. It lights up. And uh, I've spent maybe a little too much time running around with it. Because when you move it, it makes noise. So I love it. <laughs> <laughs> mine's, mine's a bit more of a deep cut. Uh, the uh, the Mulus 10 gunship. So the yes. low-altitude assault transport with that awesome rainbow face on the front of it. It's to super playable. Carries my troops in the battle along with those two included ARC troopers. All right, so so guys, advocate. So, how does how does Jazzwares pack so much detail into such you know micro scale? Uh, it's it's a combination of magic and uh, also just the the incredible support of our teammates at Jazzwares. Uh, so, I mean, Jazzwares has invested in precision tooling for the line, which means that we can pack as much possible detail into these vehicles as possible um, at such a small scale. Uh, our incredible design team, our collaborative partners over at Lucasfilm uh, for helping us with the latest assets and the latest intricate details so we can make sure everything is just perfect. And of course, our incredible design and packaging and product development teams who kind of bring everything from show to shelf, so to speak. So let's see some stuff, guys. Show us some cool stuff. Uh, well, I mean, first, David, David, have you ever wondered what a storyboard would look like if it came to life? I mean, I, I did, and I saw these. These look like they came right off the page. They're fantastic. And that's why we called this a storyboard series. I think we're sold out for today because we actually could not find samples to bring those out. <laughs> um, but uh, we're more in stock for tomorrow. So these are really, really cool. Uh, grayscale, um, grayscale, like uh, versions of our vehicles. So the TIE Fighter, the uh, sorry, the TIE Interceptor, the X Wing, and the A Wing, um, all done in this cell shaded uh, grayscale format with awesome packaging that makes it look like it, the storyboard has come to life. Um, so we've got three of these. They're limited to uh, 500 pieces a piece, and you can pick them up at Jazzwares booth. To show you a little detail on these in the next slide, like that's just incredible. They look beautiful and different from every angle and are really a centerpiece for anybody's collection. So the uh, big reveals we got for you guys, uh, it's Jazzwares Ball. I mean, I am so excited about Jazzwares Ball. I know you're excited about Jazzwares yeah, Ball. So I mean, we're both huge Star Wars collectors, and this is really where we can have a buy collectors, for collectors uh, kind of mindset when we create product. So the first off is the Battle of Hawk box set. So this thing is a gigantic battle pack. Um, it features our awesome ETT -ET Walker. Uh, it's covered in snow, so it looks like it just came straight from the Battle of Hawk. It includes two snow speeders, one of which is Luke Skywalker's, one of which is Zev Seneska's, which I know is a super deep cut, but it's the orange one right there. Um, super cool. Those are two speeder bikes, four Rebel pilots, two snow troopers, an ET, -ET pilot, and General Beers himself. Uh, all in that awesome diary on the packaging. Shout out to Will on our packaging team for that. And Olivia. Woo! Woo! <laughs> 
So you're asking yourself, what's the vault difference? So the vault difference is we want to make sure that these get into your hands in as pristine quality as possible. I mean, I know that you're a mint in box collector, David. Yeah, I mean, like the box is half the battle. <laughs> I mean, the design is amazing, and those little corner things, oh my gosh, that's amazing. So not only do we have this awesome box, but we also have this great printed outer box, this inner shipper, that has these Jazz Wars collector protector corner safes to make sure there's no packaging things in transit. And all of that comes in an outer shipper box for really next level DTC experience. And so the next is a bit of a surprise. So I, I know that a lot of fans out there have been trying to find our rare and chase vehicles. And I know it's going to challenge at retail. So this is your opportunity to get everything from each wave in one box set, direct to consumer, and it's beautiful packaging shipped straight to your door. So we're starting with uh, Series 3. As you can see here, uh, you get every vehicle, including the rare and chases. Uh, these are included in a beautiful uh, custom box with uh, foil callouts. And all of that, of course, is uh, uh, protected by an individually marked shipper as well. So we're doing that for uh, all the vehicles here. Uh, next slide, please. So the commons, David, which are your favorites here? Uh, honestly, I, I like the, the Park Speeder. The Park Speeder's my favorite. Yeah. Oh, awesome. yeah. I know we got a solo fan in the audience. Uh, for me, it's that Imperial Patrol Speeder. Uh, I love that one. And then next, we have our beautiful Chase vehicles. Oh, uh, Cad <laughs> Bane, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Cad Bane. So next up we have our light armor class. So this is a little bit different. These will be packaged in their actual cards for retail. So you'll be able to actually collect them in box if that's your choice. Um, but again, you get all of them, including the chase and the rares. Uh, that includes um, our awesome Jedi Starfighters. Next slide. As well as that first order TIE Fighter. And then we get into the rare chases. Ali Sakura's Jedi Starfighter as well as Plo Koon's Jedi Starfighter. And then next up we have our Starfighter class. Um, so that includes, again, uh, all of these are individually packaged, uh, so all you mitten box collectors can enjoy them in their awesome customized box for each one. Uh, but then we have our, that includes our, our uh, regular releases, the X-Wing Starfighter, next slide. The V-Wing, David, I know you're a big favorite. V-Wing, I like it in the day. Yeah, <laughs> and then of course our chase vehicles. And what I'm happy to report is that we'll be doing this for each series going forward. So they're limited to 1,500 pieces each, um, but again, every series that we come out with will have the, give fans the opportunity to buy them all up front in this box. Set. And Mac, as one of the fans who's been trying to get it, I, I thank you. <laughs> <laughs> And so uh, the Empire just wants to thank you for your continued support. <laughs> oh, oh, what's, oh, wait, uh -oh. I, think our, I think our signal's been hijacked. Oh, no. Uh, we didn't say there was anything else. What's, what's going on here? It's not Katniss. Oh, no. What, what is that? Uh, it's some kind of vehicle from Rebels. Uh, it really could be anything. It could have folding wings. It could interact with an assault class vehicle that's coming soon. But uh, I mean, I don't know. Any Rebels fans out there want to take a guess? <laughs> Max, I know it has four legs and needs to walk on out of here pretty quickly, so... Uh, <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Thank you, guys. I will say this. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Just, just by, uh, just by a, a smattering of applause, I, I want to find out how many people would actually listen to a David and Max podcast about oh, action films. Guys, wait. What's going on? All right, they left, but they're gonna come back. Uh, wait a second. Wait, maybe they left for a reason, perhaps. It's my fault. I banished them. I you banished them. them. Really okay, bad. guys, it's AEW time. AEW. 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 All right. That's enough. No I'm kidding. <laughs> um. 
AEW is a phenomenal wrestling organization. They've come out of perhaps nowhere in the last four years. Uh, we've been there from the very, very beginning. In fact, it's been five years ago that I received a phone call from someone who shall never be named, giving me a heads up on uh, AEW being the next thing. And there were three things that were working in their favor. They had a billionaire, they had a great potential distribution channel, and they were showing amazing signs of talent and creative. Those are the three elements that are required to create the next big wrestling organization. Now, I have a question for Greg and Daniel. Tell us who you are. That's probably the easiest question I've ever gotten. Uh, <laughs> my name is Gregory Mitchell. I'm the Vice President of Action Anime Collectibles. And like my friend Betsy here, I'm a seven, maybe ten time offender at Comic Con with their first panel ever. <laughs> and then uh, I sleep at night and actually wake up in the morning thanks to this guy right here. Uh, my name is Daniel Jung, and I'm the brand manager for All Elite Wrestling. <laughs> All right, okay, you heard that all elite wrestling. All elite. <laughs> so, could you could you share your insights on what makes AEW such a special brand in the world of professional wrestling and action figures? Yeah, uh, wrestling figures have always been unique because um, they're like real life superheroes. They're living and breathing athletes, and uh, you know they're not cartoon characters. They're not um you know uh, space heroes wearing armor. They're not even like those tent pole kind of figures where they go, oh yeah, I get to work on a Paul Rudd action figure, which is actually really cool. But you don't get to interact with Paul Rudd so much. Um, well, I have. Long story. Um, but uh, next we're, year, but we're next year, join us next year for the Paul Rudd story. Um, <laughs> only murders in the building confirmed. I'm just playing. Um, no, working with wrestlers and to be able to do what we do with Jazz Wars, the authenticity, the, the costuming, being what it is. I mean, we really put our blood, heart, and souls into every one of these action figures. And that's, that, that's the talent relationship that we have. Um, I've worked on different companies and different brands where you just don't have that magic. Jazzwares helps create that magic. And it's through that authenticity, the relationships that Daniel and I slave every day to make sure are wonderful with the talent, the wonderful talent, the talent that is so handsome and beautiful, the men and women of AEW and their costumes and outfits, that um, we get to make action figures of that. And that's what makes it our version of wrestling figures really, really special. And I hope you guys believe next level. So what are, we, what are we talking about today? You got some cool stuff to show? Oh my God. Well, there's one of the talent right now. Yeah! Yeah. That was a... Please, please, Dan, join us. Join us. Not that, not that you were invited or anything. I heard them call for Paul Rudd, so I came. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell us about making role models. It was, uh, was it a fun film. <laughs> yes, it was me, Charlene, and Scott, and we, you know, worked with some child actors, and you know, we did the LARPing and everything. It was a great time. It was, you know, it was like a summer vacation. <laughs> well, uh, kiss my Anthea, okay, uh, Dan Housen, and let's move on to this hypnotic display here on our screen. Daniel, what are we looking at here? So, uh, Ringside Collectibles is the field of now. <laughs> to <judge that> <laughs> You want to talk about this a little yes. bit? Yes, he's a little, yes, he's Dan Housen's uh, ringside exclusive. It has been on the top 10 list uh, many, many weeks in a row now. So thank you for that. If you have not pre-ordered it yet. Absolutely. Oh, it's, 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 it's right now. I gotta watch all of you QR code back and pre-order it and put it back as number one this week. It's not number one this week, you're all first. <laughs> but the box panel opens, he's got these nice pants. Everyone asks me where did I wear these pants. I was doing a promo against Ricky Starks, challenging him for the FTW uh, championship. So, you can watch him tonight at a collision. <laughs> <laughs> and as much as we're happy to have you here, Dan Alvin, and we want you guys to break the internet with this figure. Uh, since we're at San Diego Comic Con, I think we should show some new stuff while we can dance there. New oh, exclusive yeah, new I'll see videos. You Cool. Yeah. Uh, so, we'll start with a Walmart exclusive coming out. I think there's been some rumblings about whether Supreme is continuing or not, but I can guarantee you that Supreme is back. And tell me when I'm telling lies. Uh, we have Supreme CM Punk available at Walmart starting this fall. Um, we'll decide it. <laughs> Who are there? And uh, this is the version with sour cream and tomato Pepsi pill. 
Dr. Prinstein? Yeah. Ooh, that's delicious. Oh, yeah. Highly articulated, very detailed. It has pinless joints and multiple different accessories, so you almost get like a three in one figure. Yeah, Unrivaled Supreme is a great Jazzwares example of how we can take like a $60 like SRP level of figure and get it down to even lower price point. Uh, making you guys happy, still making money for our company, yes, Jeremy, um, but uh, but also making sure that we give the fans what they want. With uh, there's a, you can do at least three or four different figure combos in any one of our unrivaled supreme figures. So um, great value for the money, beautiful posing, beautiful deco. I mean, uh, look at look at uh, Coca Cola Carl there, or whatever you call him. Coca Cola Carl. Also, make sure anything he sells gets deposited into my bank account. He owes me a lot of money. Is that Dan that weird really cash app you gave us? Okay. Yes. Dan has, and that's human money. <laughs> yes, human money. Yes. Human yes. Money. yes. 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 But cash app converts it into teeth. It's a weird thing, so we're good. And this is more to just show you what accessories nice. come with the packaging, but uh, here's a picture of the actual figure in the box. Packaging team is a beautiful job. We, we actually try to create diorama experiences. That is a like a like you can imagine the the, the talent coming out onto the stage for, you know when they're coming out for their their match. The whole packaging is supposed to bring that to life and fit beautifully on the shelf. And as Jeremy alluded to earlier, uh, we have some news regarding Jazzwares Vault specifically to wrestling. Um, yeah, Jeremy, did yeah. I'll just touch on this really briefly. You know, one of the biggest challenges when you have a line that has a bunch of talent across all levels, meaning that they're the main card and the mid card, or maybe they're on air only a couple times a year. The objective is to get to everybody. Sometimes it's very difficult because the challenge is when you're dealing with mass retail, there are certain rules and guidelines you have to go by. And, uh, but Vault allows us to do things that go beyond that. So what we're gonna be doing with Vault is not only launching individual figures uh, that are gonna have a limited edition nature, but it's also gonna allow us to launch figures that have an undetermined uh, number of units that you determine. So it doesn't need to only be 5,000 or 3,000, but that allows the fans to get involved. Now, please keep in mind, and raise your hand, Jonathan, and the Ringside crew, that is also incremental to all the wonderful stuff we do at Ringside Collectibles, which is, I believe, one of the greatest online retailers of all time. So, please note that when you see figures that are out there, we're going to be taking care of all of those in the future, okay? Yeah. Uh, so I each of our retailer exclusives so that they have their own identity. And so um, first, since we talked about Supreme earlier, uh, we have an upcoming Malachi Black uh, Vault Edition uh, with a different style packaging uh, as an outer cover. Um, and you still get the same Supreme packaging that you are used to so that if you have a collector that's like unison, you'll be able to still put it on your shelf. And, um, more details to come on this in the coming months. Uh, and another way to kind of differentiate some stuff from what you guys have seen before, uh, for Unrivaled, we have our first trios pack with the Death Triangle. Yeah. First um, trios the, champion. The international belt and the trios pack for the first time. And, and as you guys tune into FanFest, you guys may see more announcements regarding future trios as well. Dan House, are you looking forward? What's the matter? Uh, when is the Dan House and Supreme coming out? <laughs> uh, we'll uh, get back to you after we go to the drawing board. Okay, good. After the Paul Rudd Supreme will come out, then you will get one. Uh, Dave Honor put you up to this? I used to work there. <laughs> oh, you used to work there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, so, just so you guys know, to make it extra special for Vault, um, Vault will debut the Ring of Honor toy line moving forward. So, we're going to give you guys a sneak peek today. So, uh, who's a fan of Ring of Honor here? What if there was no clapping when you said who's a fan of Ring of Honor? Uh, then we would have to. Uh, then you'd have to cancel this line. No, 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 no. This is confirmed. This is confirmed. Um, since you're here, um, what did you do in Ring of Honor, really? Well, I was the champion. I was the tag team champion. I was the television champion. I beat Brody King 18 times. Uh, I don't think we're seeing any of this, though. We're just I defeated like Homicide close. once, Brian Danielson, Imagine the Beatles, Samoa Joe. I basically, I beat every single person. I took over the company, and I decided that was enough. I shut it down, and I sold it to Tony Tom. Oh, cool. um, So on that note, our first figure announcement for Ring of Honor is actually... Oh, surprise! Hey, my wife made that cape. And you look you aged. You haven't aged a day since then, Dan. No, and look, they made the jar of teeth too. Oh, the jar of teeth. Everyone keeps asking. Not at all creepy or weird. 
And then um, this other person that's up next uh, may look a little younger than what you're used to, but I think some people call him the cleaner or like the best belt machine. Yes. So we have Kenny Omega in the line as well. Look at that hair and that baby face. He's so young. <laughs> He's so powerful. And uh, with Ring of Honor, you meet the current Ring of Honor champion. So uh, in his uh, previous look, we have Claudio Castanoli. Look at that. And and Claudio. And with hair. Oh. And without hair as well. So yeah, And still and very, very tall and yeah. handsome. And then last but not least for our singles pack, uh, we have the American Dragon. Brian Danielson, checking out one of the greatest grapplers in the history of grappling. And besides single packs, uh, you know, way to offer some more variety. We also have oh, 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 shoot! The packaging is going to be very oh. cool for our Ring of Honor one too. Our talented pack packaging team, Chris Metzger and Steve Bizak, um, they teamed up with an artist named Melanie Coleman. You guys might have seen some of her art in some of the TV programs as well, so. Here's a look at the packaging that we have for the vault. Yeah. The Mount Rushmore to bring him out up there, huh? All champions, right? Yeah. I want it more than they did. And as I alluded to at two packs, these guys have been rivals, friends, um, frenemies, of <laughs> and future shock over here uh, with a two pack. Uh, and another two pack we have are also. The Young Bucks. The Younger Bucks, as we like to call them, from way back in the day. They were quite the new, you know, the new, new generation guys, but they were obviously got the major push and helped create the Young Bucks to the steep here in Ring of Honor. And uh, we're, we're proud to, we're proud to, we're, we're still stoked when, uh, when Tony, uh, you know, acquired Ring of Honor. Um, so many great talents walk through those halls that we get to memorialize them and then uh, cherish them in, in all their forms in this line is very important, especially um, some greats who, uh, you know, uh, no other better way to tee this off, but we've got another sneak peek to some greats that we'll give you more details on um, in the very near future, but just know that uh, these dual packs will also have a very special uh, addition to them in the very near future, and that is... And this is a very special announcement for us um, yeah. in honor of the Disco Love, the Disco Two Pack. Um, stay tuned more when we go to All In, All Out weekends. Um, we'll have some more details on what this whole pre-order process for the vault will look like. So um, stay tuned to AEW by Jazzlers and Ringside Collectibles for all your wrestling figure news. Um, and we, 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 we made a total mistake here, Daniel. Everyone else here did their uh, Comic-Con uh, exclusive at the front of their presentation. We almost forgot to show you guys how beautiful our SDC exclusive is uh, in the form of Sting, the greatest of all. Uh, I'm sorry, here's the packaging. Beautiful packaging, beautiful figure. I got my jazz wear back. <laughs> and what might I have in the jazz wear bag? <laughs> sit, 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 sit. Well, I guess you're right about that. I got sing in the bag. Take it off. <laughs> Take it off. I haven't heard that in a long time. <laughs> Wow. Okay, look, I, I, I got some gifts I want to hand out. Okay? Yeah. I, I've only got three of them now. So I'm going to come up with one question. Dan Housen, maybe you can come up with one or two. I got three action figures in here. So who can tell me 
what my very first wrestling name was. Okay, I'm returning these. <laughs> Can I have one? Danhausen, do you know? Flash. Ooh, you're, you're close. You're halfway there. Flash what? Flash Borden. Flash Funk. Flash Borden was the, the very first wrestling name that I had. So, who said Flash? All right, hold on. Okay, this is going to be an official coffin drop and death drop all at the same time. <laughs> I think I'm going to do a quiz for this young man right here. Oh. Uh -huh. Yes, a quiz. If you can tell Dan Housen who the most famous and evil and nice wrestler is in the room, you might win this. Dan Housen, you win! <laughs> Interesting. I think we should ask a Spider-Man question. Oh. Yeah. Do you want me to do that one? Okay, I'll take care of this one. So, if anyone with a Spider-Man hat in the audience can answer who uh, Spider-Man's number one enemy is, which might be my enemy as well, maybe they'll win the next one. I don't know. Hey, you, you look like you might know the answer. Oh, wow, who won? Alright guys, I just want to say thank you to everybody. Thank you for coming to Jazz Rex first annual.